All right, welcome to spring term. My name is Troy Donaldson. I am your SOLIDWORKS instructor. Some of you I know, but a lot of you I don't know. So uh, this will be fun. Uh, I'm on campus. This, this is my office. Uh, that's where I'll be making these videos. I'm probably not going to use much of the past stuff. I just like making new ones for every term. So I'll do that most of the time. You might find me sticking an old one now and in, in now and then, but not, not very often. Um, let's talk about Blackboard. Uh, you're all in Blackboard because you're seeing this lecture. Um, but as I go through this, if you need to pause the recording, do that. Um, and then you can step along with me and, and check things out if you want. Um, today, I'm probably just going to talk about the class, the class format, uh, look at the syllabus, talk about submission area and files and file types. And then I'll just briefly get into SOLIDWORKS. Um, but then I'll make another video that'll go a little deeper into SOLIDWORKS. So I don't know. We'll just see how far I go. Again, my name's Troy. And I do have you doing an introduction video, so I get to learn about you. And also, I get to put a name with a face. That's really important to me. Um, but let's talk about Blackboard real quick and how the class is set up and really how you should manage it, right? Um, one of the primary tools will be the home page. I will list things week by week. So any assignments in week one, I'll try to put week one as the beginning part of that assignment. Um, but these are folders. They look like little folders. When you click inside, there'll be two days, typically Monday and Wednesday is what I hope to do for this class. Um, if we go to the calendar, you can kind of see it's laid out there. When I click on the calendar, it's going to open all the calendars for some reason. That's just part of this student view, I think. Um, but bear with me here because I'll turn off uh, some other calendars from the other classes I teach. So I'll leave ours on. So here's all our calendar. I, I don't build the whole term because we might we might pace at a different pace than that, and then I just have to change it all. I usually build the first week though. So uh, we'll keep track of the weeks as we go along. And Monday we'll have information and Wednesday we'll have information. A lot of times things will not be due until Friday. Uh, so look for the due dates on the assignments. Um, if you've had Blackboard before, which I'm guessing most of you have, but if you've not, if you click on one of these topics, you get to see the all the information. So in this view, you may not see it all, but like uh, lecture, that's all there is to it. But like week one, uh, there's a SolidWorks install. And what I want is I want you to go for the install and I'll show you where that information is in a second. But then I want to I want you to post about it. Like I want to know how it went. I'd like to know what software, um, what computer software you're using. Is it Windows? Is it Apple? And maybe even what kind of a computer you have if you know that information. So that's really beneficial for other students to see that, oh yeah, here's a student that that uploaded or downloaded the software onto a, a Air Mac, right? And they had some problems. And if they post about it, or if you post about it, then we can all kind of work together to get this software loaded if you're loading the software. You don't have to. Um, the main computer lab has three solid workstations. And then the engineering lab, the one I teach in all the time, 1659, has 20 stations. Um, and I can give you access to that. I haven't done it yet, but I'll try to get that done this week. And then you can access the lab if there's no class in there. Um, you just call public safety, have your student ID ready, and then you can get into lab. You become responsible for the lab. So when you leave, you should make sure no one's in the lab if you're the one that opened the lab. But anyway, we can, we can talk about that more. <clears throat> So in the calendar here, if you click on something, you get all the information. So that's helpful. Um, this is where assignments will show up along with the homepage. So if I go to week one and then today, 
then here are the assignments and things that I'm going to cover today, right? So here's the SolidWorks install information. Uh, here's a little 3D block project you're going to do. Notice it's not due until Friday. So uh, maybe I haven't covered enough information for you to do that yet. I might cover more information on Wednesday. So uh, it's just here and it's posted and I'll probably do enough SOLIDWORKS where you can get going a little bit today. Uh, but then again, you'll get another lecture on Wednesday. <clears throat> um, here's your intro video and what I'd like to see in your introduction video. And those are all there that's public, right? So only say things you're willing to share about yourself. Um, but you can look at other students' intro videos and kind of get to know some other students too. I don't make you do a lot of discussion postings and things like that. But it's nice to have somebody else to communicate with and to work on projects with. When you get stuck, I might not be available. So um, this is where this lecture is. Uh, it, it'll be available, obviously, when you find it. Uh, here's the syllabus. Let's look at that real quick. I, honestly, it's a pretty generic syllabus. Probably the most important thing on a syllabus for a student is any kind of attendance policy. Um, here's my attendance policy. It just says you must log in in that first week. Oh, my, my motion light just went off here. Hang on. Ah, see, there you go. Uh, it's still a little dark in here. I don't usually record in my office. Sorry about that, but that makes it better. Um, but really you should look at your syllabuses for, <clears throat> you know, communication guidelines, emails are good for me. I'm pretty quick with it. You'll find out. And, uh, you know, attendance. And I don't take attendance, uh, but I can see when you log in and when you're active. So I kind of know what's going on. So I don't I don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. And then probably the most important thing to students is grading. So in here, it's all about SolidWorks and practicing with it and doing the labs. That's 40% of your grade. Uh, quizzes and exams are 40%. And we will have quizzes and we'll have an exam, a midterm exam. And then the final exam is a project. Um, so that's kind of a, a big deal at the end of the term. Usually it's super fun. So late work, uh, after the second week, uh, you can get 50% on late work and that's about it. So I really am gonna discourage that this term a lot. So get stuff in on time or communicate with me. If you communicate with me that something's going on, uh, and you need more time, I can give that to you. But if you don't communicate with me and you don't turn something in after week two, it's a zero. If you then turn it in late, you can get 50%. That's it. Okay. So stay on top of stuff and communicate. That's, that's the key. All right. I think that's, you know, you can read through it. It's here for you. Um, intro video. Uh, this is a, a little exercise I'm going to have you do after you go through the tutorial uh, part creation. So I'll show you where that is um, here in a bit when we fire off SolidWorks. Uh, the book is optional. So this is the book I recommend. This is the book I've typically used. I normally require it, uh, but I'm not going to with this online class. Uh, I'll post up exercises and you'll work right off of the exercises that I post. Okay. All right. So let's keep going here. The submission area looks like this, right? This is where you submit. If you've never done this on Blackboard before, you can see one person has submitted their intro video. Uh, let's see, one person has tried to install the software. So if I was gonna post, I click onto the, thread, the discussion area and then I create a thread. <clears throat> so here's Colin. Uh, he looks like he installed it, um, and I could click on that and read it and, and see how that went. That's all I'm looking for, okay? So if I was posting, I would create thread. Give it a name, right? It's going to attach your name to the thread, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then for the SolidWorks projects, I'm going to always want two files, and I'm going to always want your last name first in the file. Now, 
We haven't done anything yet, but I'll show you that. When you save, you just put your last name in first, and then you're going to give it the name of the file. You know, like this one might be, I might call it 3D block, right? Because it looks like I'm going to make a 3D block. So the file name would be Donaldson 3D block. My last name is Donaldson. All right. So the other file is an image of the project. So you'll you'll take the project, get it in a Zoom that you like, and then you'll basically take a picture of it by doing save as and then changing it to an image file like a JPEG. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay. Um, so there's always two things you upload. There's always the SolidWorks part file, which it says here, and a image of it. And that's so if I'm looking at stuff and I don't have SolidWorks on my system, if I don't have SolidWorks, I can't open your part file, right? But if you upload an image, I can at least see an image of what you did and potentially I could grade it off of that. So it's a little, it's a thing for me, it's helpful. Um, but it's also a thing for industry because we don't always want to share our SolidWorks file. That's that's kind of my file, right? So I might want to share my design though, and I might do that with an image file. So, all right, very good. I think that's a pretty good start. Um, exams and quizzes get uploaded in a different spot, but I'll remind you of that when we get there. This is your My Grades area. When you click on that, you should be able to see your grades. So this is very important. You should be tracking this and keeping track of it throughout the term. Um, you know, at the end of the term, if I haven't heard from you all term and all of a sudden you're asking about your grades, I just know you haven't been looking at it all term. So I'm definitely less responsive at the end of the term. Uh, you should track your grade throughout the term. Make sure I haven't made any mistakes. Make sure you have no zeros. So if a zero shows up over here, that means you missed it. You didn't get it done or it wasn't on time. Uh, zeros are bad. These dashes, that's fine. It just means it's either upcoming or I haven't graded it yet. You maybe submitted it, but I didn't grade it. So dashes, no problem. Uh, a score, no problem. A zero is the problem. So keep track of your grades. All right, good. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We did the submission area. That just is going to roll along. And notice I put week one in front of everything, and there's due dates associated with everything. EOD means end of day. Uh, I think it'll all be end of day for this class. Uh, sometimes I do uh, SOD, start of day, but not typically. Um, all right. Yeah, that's it. Week by week. And we just flow along. Let the calendar be your guide. Uh, hopefully you don't get all these crazy calendars when we go to calendar because that's annoying. Right. But things will show up on Wednesday. If we have a quiz, that's normally on Friday. So I am going to have an open lab. I'm trying to figure out when the open lab can be. And that's for you to come get help in person if you need it. Uh, my schedule is this right now and you can see i put your open lab at 2 p.m on thursday but i also have thursday morning 8 a.m available um so i'm gonna probably i also have monday afternoon available like you can see right here is when i'm doing this class i'm gonna try from 11 to 12 to to make your videos so like at 12 I also could be available. So uh, I think I maybe will create a survey. Right now, Open Lab this week is going to be Thursday at two o'clock if you want to come. It's in 1659. So you could come and just say hi, or you could come and introduce yourself, or you could come and work on SolidWorks if you want. Uh, this will also be open for my advanced SolidWorks class. So that might be kind of fun for you to see what they're doing. Uh, but It'll actually be open for any class, you know, to come and get help on any topic. So kind of a basic uh, two to four open engineering lab, 1659. So that's the current plan. All right, let's talk about SolidWorks a little bit. Um, when you click into SolidWorks, oh, let's, let's make sure we have everything. So I think also I wanted to emphasize the download information. So let's do that first. And then I'll go into SOLIDWORKS a little bit. So the download information is here. 
under April 1st, that's today. Uh, it is a free download. You must use your Saints email. That's that's a big problem that students have. Um, it's best if you have, you know, a, a laptop or a desktop that's within five years old. It that should work just fine. When you click on this button, it's going to take you to the download uh, software area for whoops for educators and students, military, blah, 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 right? But there you are as a student. So this is the area you're looking for. And this was the link right off of Blackboard. You're going to want your name, first and last, your Saints email. Uh, and then you're going to select one of these, what you are, you're a student. And then you want to download 2023. That's the same as I have, and that's the same as in the lab. And that's important because you don't want your files being upgraded and downgraded and changing versions on you. So 2023 is the version you want. Uh, and you probably already don't have a serial number, so that's probably a no. But beyond that, I haven't done this, but I believe they're going to send you an email to your Saints email uh, about download information. So once you go through this, if you could post up about how it went, uh, that would be very helpful for everybody else. Obviously, I don't have to do it. I have the software. The college gives it to me. I've never done it as a student. So I'm not the best resource. Light went off again. That usually means you're talking too long. So I'll wrap it up here in a second. Um, anyway, that's the, the download information. All right. So when you get it, uh, it'll probably in, install and look something like uh, mine is in a folder like this, right? And then you open that up and then there it is, 2023. Now, <clears throat> you may get electrical, you may get manage, you may get visualize or the composer. Those are not the softwares we want to run. We want to run SolidWorks 2023. And when you fire it up, it looks like this. Now, it may come into your system uh, a little differently because mine's coming off a network. So like you, it could ask you immediately, like, what do you want to do? Do you want to make a part or, or what units do you want to work with? Okay. So whatever it asks, answer those questions. Um, you know, we're going to work both in the metric and the U.S. system. I'm going to be in the U.S. system right now. Um, but when I go up to this red file and say new, which you won't have to do, you'll probably get this dialog box. It's asking me what I want to do. Do you want to you know, make a part or do you want to put a bunch of parts together or do you want to make a drawing? So we are going to start with part modeling. We're going to make parts. OK, so this is a good opportunity to pause the video, you know, open your software and try to get to this Bot, right? If you want to follow along, um, if you want to do like follow the leader and go step by step, which is a good way to do this because then you can practice things and do things multiple times. Um, all right. So this is part modeling. Um, and there's a bunch of information across the top here. And for some reason, the, the cam button or tab is picked. So that's not what we're going to work. We're going to work in sketch and features mostly, these two. Notice as I click on them, I get palettes of tools. So these are tabs, features tabs, and these. this is the sketch tab. <clears throat> when you click on these tabs, some things are grayed out, like move entities. I can't do that right now because I have no entities. So SolidWorks knows when you can do something or not, and it grays them out if you can't do it. So none of the features can I do, really, uh, because I have nothing going on, right? I have blank. This is my modeling area. These are tabs, and these are tools, right? Um, this is the history information. This is like when you build your part, the history is going to show up on the left. And it's really handy because we can go back in time and change things. So. The save buttons are all up here. So if you have any Windows experience, you'll notice that the save buttons kind of look like save disks. We don't really have three and a half disks anymore, but back in the day, we used to have those. 
Uh, and there's a little triangle next to that. See it, a little triangle? So when I click that, I get a menu. So that's true with any little triangle. So right there, I see a little triangle. If I click it, I get more. See that little triangle right there? Click it, I get more. So we look for that, like here's a little triangle. I don't get more. Here's another triangle. Oh, I get a couple choices, right? So keep an eye on that. Uh, but saving is important because we want to save and we want to give it a save name right away. So it opens this part and names it part one. That's not going to work. The, if you submit a part that's named part one, I'll probably give you a zero because it's not descriptive and it's not good file management technique. All right. So if this was my 3D block project, I would want to go and I'd want to go save as. You want to save it to a location that you can get to it. So desktop's a good idea. And actually, a folder is a good idea. And maybe name the folder ENGR248. So you know all of this coursework is going to go into this folder, right? Um, so now it's going into the folder. That's this area right here. And this is the file name. So what do I put first? Last name. Right, and then the name of the project, I'll call it 3D Block. Okay, so now I've got a new new name going. You'll see this part one will disappear when I hit save. And it's now named appropriately and going onto the desktop. That's important. You got to know where it's going because you're going to have to attach it, right, in Blackboard and upload it. So you want to do that. Um, once we get an object here, I'll show you how to make an image of it. Uh, one of the first things you're going to do is you're going to work through a tutorial. So if I was going to work through the tutorial, I wouldn't want to start this 3D block yet. So maybe I could go file new part. OK, notice it named it part two. <laughs> That's OK. It doesn't matter. But you can see how my laptop does it there. They both are down here. Right. And I'm in part two. All right. So if you're going to do that tutorial. Uh oh, it's glitching. Hang on, everybody. We're going to have to let the network catch up. Ah, up here in the help area, that little question mark, you'll see tutorials right there. So, yeah, one of the first things you're going to do is a SolidWorks tutorial. It's called Lesson One Parts right here. Looks like it's going to take you 30 minutes, so give yourself enough time and click on it and follow along. The interesting thing about the tutorials, they're very good. So I wouldn't have you do them unless I thought they were really good. And I think they are good. You can learn a lot from these tutorials. Feel free to do as many as you want, but don't ask me questions about future stuff until we get there, please. Cause it's like, there's a lot of you, right? And if you're all asking me about different things in the future, it gets crazy. So just try and keep your questions to the current content if you work ahead, which I think you should. It's super fun. Anyway, let me just tell you about the tutorials, though. It does have you do things differently than I might do it. And that's a good thing because you can see different ways to do things. You know, in the end, you get to choose how you're going to do it. Right. So try to follow their system and what they do. Um, and a lot of times the way that that it works is they show you what you're going to do and then you go do it kind of thing. So this is what we're going to build, but then I got to go to next topic to now start. You know, it has you created a new thing, which I just did. I got it called part two. Uh, it's going to have you do a save and it's going to have you change the name, do all of that. That's good. And then go to the next topic. Again, it's showing you what you're going to do, right? And then you go to the next topic and do it. So that's a little confusing for folks. There's a backup button so you can go back and forth like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do, a 120 by 120 block, right? And then I can read all about it. And it's actually going to tell you how to do it, right? It's going to say, hey, pick here, pick here. If you think you can do it, do it. If if it doesn't work, then go look at how they say to do it. OK, that's what I would recommend. So if I back up and say, oh, OK, I'm supposed to make a sketch. 
and uh, 120 by 120, it looks like that maybe this is metric, um, then I could go for it, right? Now, uh, I'm gonna maximize this screen and I'm gonna move this again. This is gonna be in the way a lot, I think. I don't know where to move it. It's like in the way all the time. Anyway, I'm gonna scoot this over or maybe I'll just minimize it. Yeah, because I wanna show you this. This right here is the units that you're gonna work with. IPS is inch, pound, and second. So that's the default setting when you open SolidWorks. If you want metric before you work, before you work, uh, you need to switch it. And you can do that to millimeter gram second or meter kilogram second, depending on the unit you want, right? So if that's the case and you do that, then you're working in millimeters. Uh, if I leave it inch, pound, second, then you're working in inches, all right? In the 3D block, I don't care what you do. So I do it in inches, but all right, let me just show you basic modeling and that'll be good for today. Um, and I think I'll minimize this to get it out of our way. All right. So the way SolidWorks works is we sketch first and then we make it into a 3D object. And sketching is literally sketching. So if I'm gonna make a 3D cube, and it's it's nice to have a visual of what you're gonna make. So maybe I'll do this. Instead of a 3D cube, I'll leave that to you, but I'm gonna make uh, this. I guess you kind of need to see it, don't you? All right. So I'm gonna make this. It's a round cylinder. So. One of the things you you got to know what you want to make, right? So I have to either give you an assignment or I have to make you choose an object. And then you look at it and you go, okay, I'm going to model this thing. I'm going to 3D make it in SolidWorks, right? But you got to know what you're going to make. So it's hollow. Uh, I might not hollow it out today, but I'll just make the cylinder to show you the basic concept. I would have to measure it if I wanted to know the exact size and model it correctly. I'm going to estimate the size, okay? The stuff I'll give you will have dimensions on it, or I'll just say, do what you want. Or I'll just say, you know, model this thing at home and measure it or estimate it best you can. I'm disinterested in seeing if you can model, right? All right. So it's a round object and I start with a sketch. So when you click sketch, SOLIDWORKS shows you the three planes that exist in space. We are a three-dimensional space, right? We have the top, the front, and the right side. You have to pick what plane you're going to sketch on, okay? And this will position your object for now. We can move objects later, but for now, it's going to position it. So if I wanted this thing to be like upright, sitting like this, then I need to draw this circle, this bottom surface on the top plane, right? Uh, I can make it go up or down, doesn't matter. But if I draw it on the front plane, it's gonna be in this position, yeah? So I'm gonna draw on this point. It rotates the plane, puts it perpendicular to me, and now I'm in sketch mode. I know I'm in sketch mode because it says exit sketch. If I exit sketch, then I'm no longer in sketch mode. So there's two modes and we got to know when we're sketching and when we're not. So I'm going to go back into sketch and I'm going to look at my three dimensions. I'm doing that by holding the roller mouse down like a button. So if I push it like a button, I can rotate. I'm just using my finger on the laser, right? <laughs> push it like a button and you can rotate the three geometries, right? You can get them upside down and you can get them all messed up, right? The view cubes right here, if you want to go back to a standard isometric view, that's right here. And it'll flip it around and put it back in view. But you can also do uh, a number of things with the view cube, right? You can click a surface and it'll give you that perfect surface. Uh, you can go back to isometric. And you can do all that with your roller mouse button too, right? It's just harder to do. All right, so I'm gonna click again on the top plane to sketch. 
Now I just start sketching. If I roll the roller mouse, it zooms, right? It zooms according to where you put the mouse. So if I put the mouse over here, you can see it goes away from me. If I put the mouse here, it stays on target when you zoom. So where the mouse is, is critical with zooming. All right, I'm gonna sketch a circle. I am gonna hook it up to the origin and I'm just gonna make a circle. So I just went click, click. I didn't even care what size it was. Didn't care at all. I ignored all the information over here and I just click, click and place the circle, right? So I'll undo that and do it again. Circle. I did connect it to the origin. That's good modeling technique for the center point. But then as I'm dragging it, I see this over here, but I'm just ignoring it. I'm just dragging it out and clicking. There's my circle. That's called sketching. When you sketch, literally you're just sketching the basic proportions of whatever you're trying to model, right? Then I smart dimension it. So when I click this, you can see my mouse turns into a little dimension thing. That means I'm smart dimensioning and you can see it's chosen. I can click on the circle, pull it out, give myself a number of different views based on where the mouse is. So really that's not important. Uh, I kind of like this. So I'm gonna click there to place it. Then I can input a number. Notice it's highlighted. I don't have to click in there. It's automatic. I'm gonna say this thing is two inches. Yeah, it's close. I hit two and enter and it makes it two inches. Okay, smart dimension is how we size things. And now it's sized. And it says down in this area, it's fully defined. We do want our sketches fully defined, best we can get them. Notice it turned black. If the sketch is black, it's fully defined, okay? It's still just a sketch, it's flat as a pancake, right? But we sketch and then we turn it into a solid. We sketch and then we do something. We sketch and then we do something, okay? So I'm done smart dimensioning. I can unclick that. Uh, I like the dimensions, so I can use the green check mark to approve it. So now it's all there, right? So now I just need it pushed into this depth. Like I have that part. Now I just need to extrude. That's what it's called when you want to make a solid. And that's under features. Extrude. There is extrude cut if there was something to cut, but I don't have anything to cut. All right, I got to pause you for a second. I'm getting a phone call. All right, I'm back. So once you get your sketch done, then you can extrude it. So that's in features. Extrude makes a solid. Uh, extrude cut, which is not available, that would make a hole. So maybe if I want to make this thing hollow like it actually is, see if you can see, yeah, it's actually hollow then I could do an extrude cut to cut that hollow part out, all right? So I'm gonna extrude. As soon as you hit the button, it rotates it, and it also sends it in a direction. You can change that, uh, but it also guesses at how much you want to extrude. It's trying to help you all the time. That's what SolidWorks does. Notice that it's also highlighted because it knows that that 0.1 extrusion is probably not what you want, okay? And it's not. I want, I'm gonna guess at an inch and a quarter. I want 1.25. Notice I didn't have to click in there. It's already highlighted. You can just type. Uh, when you hit enter, it, it shows you a preview of what you're gonna get, right? So this is what it's gonna do. And you can keep changing it. Uh, if, if you're designing, you can do this kind of thing. If you're just trying to get it right, then maybe you made a mistake and you wanna put the right number in, right? Uh, this is the direction switch button, so I can send it down or up. And there's other ways to extrude. I'm not gonna go through all of these right now, but like mid plane would send it two different directions. Uh, so there's a lot of choices here, blinds the default. Uh, but that's what I want. I want one, two, five. I want it going up, and when I like it, I hit the green check and I have my first solid. 
So you're going to make a 3D block. So you're going to draw a rectangle and extrude it. And that's all you have to do for that 3D block exercise. OK. If I wanted to make it hollow, it's not hollow. It's solid. Uh, I could do that. So it's the same process. Sketch, then do something. So I have to go back to sketch. I have to hit sketch. And now it's saying, OK, we have a three-dimensional object, so we don't need the three planes anymore. Where do you want to sketch? And I want to sketch here, or, or I could sketch here, but I want to sketch here on this surface. Again, when you click on the surface, it's going to rotate it and bring it right to your face, right? And now I'm in sketch mode, and I'll do another circle. And I don't know how thick it is, but it's pretty thin, right? Um, and then I can dimension that to make it perfect. So I'm going to say it is, I'll just say 1.9. Okay. Again, my sketch is, is fully defined. It says so down here. So now I can do something to that sketch. These are very simple sketches. And actually, you want to keep your sketches simple. Okay. But I'm going to do an extrude cut. And this time, it's going to cut. Now, again, it's guessing at the direction. The direction is correct. Uh, it's guessing at the distance. This would cut it all the way through. It would be like a pipe. So if I hit yes, you can see what it does. Well, that's not what I want. So I'm going to undo that. Right. So when you undo it, it undoes the feature, but I still have my sketch. So that's good. Uh, I can go back into features and do an extrude cut. And maybe I change it to 1.2. That gives me 50 thousandths at the bottom, right? So we'll see what that does. Ah, it gives me a bottom. So there it is. Notice it still says part two because I haven't renamed it. So this is the time before much time goes along that I would want to do a file save as. Again, I'll put it on the desktop. Here's my other one. So I'll just click on that and say, hey, this is going to be the 3D block now, right? And hit save. It might say, hey, do you want to replace the other one? I'm like, sure, let's replace it. All right. So it doesn't want to do that. It wants me to rename it again. But I think you get it. You definitely want to do a save. Okay. That is more than enough to get started. So you have a lot to do. You have you have uh, all these projects from day one, right? Watch the lecture. That's this. You clearly did that. Uh, look over the syllabus. Uh, get the software downloaded and then make this block and an intro video. So you have a lot to do. All right. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Uh, find me Thursday if you want to come to an open lab and uh, communicate if you're having any problems. And welcome back to spring term.